Good evening, Metro Schools family. Welcome to our Teams Live event this evening, January 21st, uh, 6 o'clock. Hope you're having a good New Year's off to a, a great start. We had a series of live events last week for how to support elementary and secondary students in both literacy and math. And tonight we're pleased to follow those two offerings with some additional ways that you can support your students in home, specifically with some um, programs that we are pleased to be able to offer to across the entire district, um, both Lexia Core 5 and iReady. These are adaptable programs that can benefit any student. And we know that in particular with the uh, age of, of remote learning, virtual learning, as well as some of the challenges that our students have experienced due to the pandemic, um, these programs are super great tools, powerful resources that our district has uh, made available to all students to benefit all students with their learning loss or any additional challenges they may be experiencing at home. So we're, we're gonna have, uh, we're pleased to have um, the actual people from these programs and these products be able to share some ways that you can work with your students at home to get the most out of uh, these programs. So I'm going to walk through our agenda. Uh, again, welcome to tonight. It's such a pleasure to, to have any uh, parents or families who have taken the time just to learn a little bit more about some of the resources that are available to help their student in this virtual learning space. Uh, we know that parent engagement is such a critical part of student success and we're happy to be able to share this information with you tonight. We're also going to hear uh, quickly from Ms. Katie Patullo. She's our director of MTSS. That stands for Multi-Tiered System of Support. Um, so she, and she's going to introduce our, our teams of speakers tonight. You're going to hear again about iReady. That's the program that we have to support math. We also have a program for literacy, Lexia Core 5, and we have a team there that will also give a, give a presentation. And then we'll have a question and answer. We'll have around 10 minutes at the end for question and answer. A couple of housekeeping notes I want to point out. We're again, graciously um, and, and so thankful for the translation support that we have. So we have uh, Rocio and Sherry, they're gonna be translating in Spanish and literacy as we go tonight. So in real time, if you look at the question mark icon, on your screen, that's the question and answer. They're gonna be publishing translated highlights and uh, critical takeaways from each slide that the presenter is speaking to. Um, and they're gonna be providing that in both Spanish and Arabic. Um, and so we don't want our questions to get lost in, in that um, those updates that they're providing in those other languages. We think it's definitely critical for us to be able to uh, provide uh, translated services so we can increase the access that our families have to the content and information that we're sharing. So we're really pleased to have those. We also have Ms. Renita Perry, who will be producing the event and, and sort of operating the chat and the question and answer behind the scenes. So grateful for her support as well. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Katie, again, Director of MTSS for some introductory remarks, and then we'll get forward, go forward with our presentation. Again, thank you for being here. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm Katie Patello, Director of MTSS, uh, which again um, stands for Multi-Tiered System of Support. It's through this system of support that we work to respond to individual student needs to empower each MNPS student to exceed grade expectations. This begins with high quality standards-based instruction for all students. And tonight we're excited to have the opportunity to share more information about two resources that provide additional personalized learning opportunities in literacy and math. We're going to begin by learning more about the many resources available through iReady Math, and we'll be hearing from Megan Robinson, the National Director for Content and Implementation at Curriculum Associates. So I will turn it over to Megan. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having us and MP, MNPS family. Ooh, can't say that 10 times fast. We're really excited to be here to tell you all about iReady and how you can get the most out of it at home with your students. Um, if I could have uh, the slides advanced there, but folks can see, I know you can't see my face on your screen um, or my live camera, um, but as the slides advance, hopefully you'll see the slides. Just one more and you'll be able to see me there, Megan Robinson, on the next slide. Okay, I don't know if I'm, I might be experiencing a delay on my end. 
Um, but we know uh, this school year, you all have navigated through so much uncertainty. Here you can see on the screen a few headlines um, from the Tennessean um, about the many changes uh, that we all have had to navigate over the course of this school year, even these headlines just coming from the last few weeks of the school year. So we would like to say thank you. And on um, the next slide, you'll, you'll see some of our words of appreciation where we would just like to thank you for your continued energy, love, and hard work that you put into not only caring for your students, but also helping to keep them learn while they're at home. We certainly hope that our time together tonight with you is going to help you further understand what I really is, how to get the most out of it so that you can get that additional support at home. So again, from all of us at iReady, thank you so much for joining us this evening, but also thank you for all of the support that you're providing your students during this time. So uh, as we move forward, there are five questions that I have to share with you that we'll use to guide um, our overview and insight into iReady today. Those five questions are, I'll just wait for them to appear here on the screen. How is the iReady diagnostic like an eye exam? What are the iReady lessons and how do they support learning at home? How can you monitor progress? How can you motivate your student and celebrate their success? And where can you go for more support? So these are the five questions we're going to answer this evening. And of course, any other questions that you have, please send them in the chat and we will answer them at the end of the presentation this evening. So let's go ahead and dive into that first question. How is the iReady diagnostic like an eye exam? So if we move ahead to the next slide, well, you'll see some information about the iReady assessment. So I'm wearing glasses this evening. You might not be able to see me in my glasses, but I'm sure many of you are wearing glasses as well. So if you think about that eye exam, when you take that eye exam, the doctor wants to understand what you see and how it help you see better. That's how the iReady diagnostic works. So when the test is over, we have an idea of what your student knows and what areas we can help your support it, your student. Oh, you can go back one slide there. Thank you so much. Um, what your student uh, can know can know better. The screener identifies what your child already knows and what they can work on next. And the best way to help your child when they're working on their iReady diagnostic is actually to not assist them in answering the questions. Oh, I'll let that sink in for a second. So to really support your student as they're taking the iReady diagnostic, the best way to support them to make sure that they get the just right lessons, because the lessons that they receive in iReady are determined by the performance on the diagnostic, the best way to help them is to not help them answer the questions on the diagnostic. Now, a little bit more about how the diagnostic is like an eye exam as you move ahead here. What we'll see is uh, one of those charts that we normally see at the eye doctor. So continuing with this metaphor. And as your students take the iReady diagnostic, hopefully we'll be able to move ahead so you can see uh, what I'm referring to here. Your students are gonna see questions, some questions that are easy. They're gonna see some questions that are just right. And they're gonna see questions that are too hard or about skills or concepts that they haven't learned yet. This is exactly how the diagnostic was designed. Every student will experience not knowing or being familiar with about half of the questions, regardless of their skill level. This is a good thing. The diagnostics intention is to help teachers know exactly what students already know and what they're ready to learn next and how they can support them in making sure they can gain access to their grade level content. And the way to do that is to offer questions to students to help us understand what's too easy, what's just right, and what is too hard. Now, as I noted a moment ago, iReady is, we talked about the diagnostic, but I also referenced some online instruction that students have. So if we move forward just a little bit here, what you'll see next are the other components of iReady. So yes, your students take that diagnostic screener that then places them into their own learning pathway online. And it also sets up tools and resources for teachers. So I would like to dig more now into uh, understanding more about that online instruction, because this is the component, the online instruction is the piece that your students are likely using on a daily or weekly basis. 
So when we talk about the online instruction, what's really important to remember is that the instruction is personalized for every student. So even though there may there's a, a number of students in a particular fourth grade classroom, let's say, we are able to understand what each student's individualized needs are and provide each student with the lessons that are appropriate for them. So the lessons that students will encounter are set up based on their diagnostic performance. Those lessons aren't just sit and get experiences for students. Students have to interact during their iReady lessons. So if you go ahead and move, move ahead to the next slide, you can get some more insights into what makes up the iReady lessons. So the lessons are a combination of exploration where students dive right into the learning and instruction responds to students' needs. So as your student is moving through the iReady lesson, they may have the same lesson as another student within the school district. However, each student's experience within that lesson is very different based off of what they're able to demonstrate through that lesson. Throughout the lesson, there's also guided practice for students. So they practice ideas and they receive corrective feedback and support so that they're able to move their way through the lesson. And at the end, there's a short scored quiz. Now, the lessons aren't just uh, fun lessons because I say they're fun. We've actually researched our lessons, which is really unique about iReady. We have students uh, that participate in, in our research groups where they wear Google glasses and hand sensors that were able to, in a research-based, proven scientific manner, determine whether or not the iReady lessons are motivating and engaging for students. And if we see a dip in student motivation and engagement within lessons, then we're able to adjust those lessons so that they maintain student interest. So they're not just interesting because I think they are, they're truly interesting because we are scientifically testing these lessons with iReady students. Not only that, they're built to reflect the college and career readiness standards that your classroom teachers are teaching. So we're looking at the same content with the same level of expectation, and that's what's being used to drive and, and develop those iReady lessons. And of course, we always want them to be fun and highly interactive. Moving ahead, as your students are working in their iReady math lessons, they're gonna see lessons in four different domains. You can see those domains on the screen there. Numbers and operations, algebra and algebraic thinking, measurement and data, and geometry. Your students will see lessons in these domains in the order that's most appropriate for them. Some students will start with lessons in measurement and data. Other students will start with lessons in numbers and operations. Lessons will be sent to students in the order that is most appropriate for them. Additionally, to the design of the lessons, it's important to know that each lesson contains very specific design principles. So whether you're looking at a kindergarten lesson or a third grade lesson or a fifth grade lesson, you're going to see these same design principles in action. I'll let them go ahead to the next slide so you can see three of our design principles. The first design principle that I'm just gonna note for you today is dive right in. What our research showed us, what students told us straight away is that they really appreciate being able to jump right into learning in a lesson. They don't necessarily need a long introduction to the lesson. They just want to start learning and get the support that they need when they need it. So students dive right into their iReady lesson. From there, oh, not quite yet ready to move ahead, is the responsive instruction. For the responsive instruction, students receive the instruction that they need within the lesson if and when they need it. So there are many students can be working on the same lessons, but different students have different experiences based on their needs. If students are answering questions incorrectly, it will activate the responsive instruction to support them in restating the instruction, restating different ways to look at the information, along with hints and guides throughout. This is also a part of the productive struggle that students, that students experience through their iReady lessons. They're not going to know all of the content that they come across, but that's why the responsive instruction is built in, along with other tools like glossaries, audio, and tools like rulers and protractors that they can use to help them move through each lesson. In addition to those design principles, we have equity principles that drive the, uh, the creation of our lessons as well. I want you to see what four of those design, what, what four of those equity principles are now. So you should see them on your screen in just a moment.
one of those equity principles. But I'm waiting for them to come up. <laughs> Megan, this is there Dr. Williams. I, I just wanted to say you're doing a great job. Um, there's definitely a, a lag. Um, this equity principle slide has been on my screen for about 15 seconds. Um, I think it just takes a while to catch up. So I just want to apologize to you and the audience. Thank you. Oh, sure thing, sure thing. So here you can see our equity principles. Um, the four of them, four of our equity principles that we use to design our iReady lessons are on the screen there. Uh, all students, we want to make sure that all students have access to grade level rigorous instruction. Um, and so the iReady lessons are designed to launch students into their grade level content and provide the support in the areas that they need. We want to ensure that all students see their authentic lives represented. We want to support asset-based instruction. We know that every student has skills that they bring with them to every single classroom every single day, and we want to support that and use those assets to provide them even greater access to their education experience. And lastly, we, we promote truth-telling. So right now, what I would just like to highlight is how we ensure a student see their authentic lives represented with one example. So on the next slide, what you're going to see is an example from, from our mathematics program where a teacher was even so blown away by what she saw that she felt compelled to share it on social media. And in this post, you'll be able to see how she noted that students it not only generated a great conversation across the classroom and opened up the, um, the experiences to other students in the class who may not be of that culture, but then it also uh, provided an opportunity to bring about and show a particular student or student group's experience uh, within their culture so that we could further expand on the connections that students make and their understanding of the world outside of what they may experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So keeping that in mind, I'm just gonna have a skip ahead there a little bit, uh, two slides since we won't be, um, the next slide won't really, um, won't really work for us in this moment. We're gonna go ahead to the lesson facts. So as we're talking about the lessons, just want to make sure, uh, clear up any questions that you might have as you're thinking about what your students' experience has been like as they have been working on their iReady lessons. So I've got three lesson facts to share with you today. The first lesson fact is if your student does not pass a lesson the first time, they get to try it a second time. So when your student takes the lesson the first time, there we go, um, if they don't pass the lesson the first time, sometimes what our research shows is that students don't pass the lesson the first time because they missed some of the instructions. Maybe it said choose all that apply, all the answers that apply, and they just chose one, right? Or maybe students were distracted because something else was going on, and it could also be because the students simply didn't understand the content the first time around. What our research shows is that when we give students a second time to pass the lesson, overwhelmingly students are successful the second time they hear the content, which makes sense because in my life sometimes when I hear things twice, I do a better time the second time around as well. So if your student notes to you or you notice that they are seeing a lesson the second time, it's because they didn't pass the lesson the first time and that is by design. Second, lessons take anywhere from three minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the grade level of the lesson and the complexity of the skill that is being that students are learning in that lesson. But fun fact, the lessons automatically save, so your student doesn't have to finish them all in one sitting. They can work on a lesson until they're ready to move on to something else, take a break, and return when they're ready, and the lessons will pick right back up where they left off. So next, just want to point out to you a little bit about how you can monitor your students' progress as they're working in iReady. And to do that, I just want to familiarize you with the student dashboard that your student sees, which is where they log in to experience their iReady lessons. So right off the bat, I want to take a moment to shout out two different uh, ways that your students can work on lessons. They can work on lessons through my path or through teacher assigned lessons. My Path lessons are the lessons that are automatically assigned to your students from iReady. Teacher assigned lessons are the lessons that teachers can assign to students if and when they feel it's necessary. Your students will always see My Path lessons. They may or may not see teacher assigned lessons based on their teacher's decision to assign lessons or not. Now, the student dashboard looks a little bit different for your, our kindergarten, first, and second grade students. 
from our third grade and older students. So just wanna give you a quick little view here of how it looks slightly different for kindergarten through second grade students and third grade and up students. Now, additionally, as we look at that student dashboard, there are lots of different ways for students to move around within iReady. They're able to select their to do, my progress, my stuff, and learning games. Let me just explain what's in each of those so that you can get the most out of them. Under to do is where students will see all of their lessons, assignments, and that's where they'll complete their iReady diagnostic assessment. Under my progress is where students will see their time on task, their lesson path, and their lesson streak. This is a great page to look at with your student to discuss how much time they're spending on their iReady lessons, how many lessons they've passed, and how many lessons they've passed in a row. Completed work is a great space to look exactly at which lessons students have completed, when they completed those lessons, and what their score was at the end of the quiz. You can always have conversations with your student about the, what they've learned in each lesson, how they felt successful in each lesson, and how they can be even more successful moving forward. Again, by looking at their completed work. My Stuff is a great place your students probably will enjoy going to. This is a space where they can go and change their buddies, their backgrounds, and they can cash in points to play reward games. When they pass iReady lessons, they learn points so that they can play some games as a reward. My Stuff is a space where your students can certainly spend their time, but you don't want them to spend too much time there. Fun fact, if students, students only, receive, uh, only receive credit for completing iReady lessons when they're actually in the iReady lesson and interacting with the interface. The lessons won't simply just sit if a student logs in and is logged in for 45 minutes, walks away, makes a sandwich, and comes back a little bit later. They're not going to receive credit for working on the iReady lessons that whole time. After two or three minutes, it will time out and no longer give them credit for being present. So when you see time that students are working on lessons, it truly is the time that they spent on iReady. And then there are learning games. Learning games is a great opportunity for students to further build their mathematics fluency. Students can play learning games after they finish their My Path lessons for the week. And you'll want to talk to the classroom teacher to understand how much time should students be spending in their iReady lessons, and if that's 45 minutes a week per subject, which is our recommendation, then beyond that 45 minutes, students can play their learning games. So to wrap up, I'm going to have us just go ahead, um, just a couple of slides here, so we can talk about how you can motivate your student and celebrate their success before we pass it off to our colleagues at uh, Lexia to tell you about how you can get the most from their program. So how can you motivate your student and celebrate their success? Well, three steps, prepare, support, and celebrate. So let's start off by looking at prepare. So to prepare your student for their iReady lessons and set them up for success, we highly suggest providing a quiet workspace for them that mirrors the classroom experience as much as possible. Also, coming up with a plan about which iReady activities they will do. Are they going to be working on their teacher assigned lessons? Are they going to work on their MyPath lessons? And how long are they planning on working on those today? Help them focus by directing them to, their to, to the to-do section for their upcoming lessons and encourage them to take their time, ask questions, and write things down as they're working on their lessons so that if and when they do have questions or need support, they have jotted down some notes. Next is support. As your student is working on iReady, when we say support, we don't necessarily mean helping them complete the activities, but encouraging them to do their best and carefully work through their lessons. Remind your student that making mistakes are a welcome part of learning, and that's why the iReady lessons have all sorts of supports like glossaries, audio support, and tools available to help them grow. Help them keep them on track by regularly reviewing and tracking their progress using the My Progress page, and ask them about what they've been learning in their lessons to have conversations about their success. And most importantly is celebrate their success. Celebrate your students' milestones, such as passing a lesson or reaching a goal, because that's also something that typically their classroom teacher would be doing as well. And since they're at home with you, we encourage you to celebrate their success. 
There are a couple of ideas here on the screen for you. You can have your student put a marble in a jar after passing the lesson. I suggest starting with a small jar to start. <laughs> and then after you fill that jar, you can gradually make the jar bigger and bigger if you would like and celebrate when it's full. They can watch a movie or play a favorite game after they've reached their particular milestone. Let's say it's spending a certain number of minutes on iReady that week or completing a certain number of lessons that week. Or you could even just let your student pick something else fun that they would like to do in celebration of their hard work and focus. Now, lastly, we'd just like to wrap up by showing you where else you can go for more support. When your student is logged into iReady, in the upper right hand corner, I want you to notice the Family Center. I'm going to wait for this to appear on the screen because it's really helpful when you can see it. So when your student is logged into iReady, look in the upper right hand corner at the Family Center. When you click on the Family Center in the upper right hand corner, it will direct you to the iReady Families page where there is guidance and support via videos and a liter literature that you can read in several different languages. Checking out the iReady Family Center will not only reiterate much of what was shared with you today, but it will also continue to help you get the most out of iReady and learn even more about iReady as you continue to use it at home with your students. So our key takeaways today for iReady is that the iReady personalized instruction provides students with lessons based on their individual skill levels and needs based on their iReady diagnostic performance. So they, we need them to complete the diagnostic independently. Regularly reviewing progress with your student using the My Progress page on the student dashboard will help to keep them motivated and engaged. And of course, consider ways to celebrate your student's progress in iReady to honor their hard work and their focus. We encourage you to submit your questions in the chat and hang out with us for another while yet so we can answer some of those questions. For now, I'm gonna pass things off to the next presenter to talk to you about Lexia. Thank you. Thank you, Meg, for that great uh, overview of iReady. Um, I'm going to be sharing information with you about Lexia Core 5 support. Um, we can go ahead and advance the slide. So a little bit about me before we get started today. My name is Jasmine Hicks. Um, I am a former educator and school leader with experience in grades 5 through 12 Spanish and reading intervention. Um, I've had the pleasure of working in school leadership as an instructional coach and as a head of school. And currently, I'm a professional learning facilitator with Lexia Learning, uh, where I assist our partners, our teachers and schools, and obviously you all as families with understanding our reading products that we provide. Um, I am a fellow Tennessean and my family and I currently reside in my hometown of Memphis, so I'm so excited to be here virtually with you in Nashville today. So a little bit about Lexia Core 5 Reading. The program, it's essentially being implemented at your child's school. Uh, it's designed to really reinforce reading intervention and reading enrichment. It provides an individualized, we, we can go back one more slide. It provides an individualized reading curriculum that's really designed for all students in grades pre-K through grade five. We can advance. So by the end of our time together today, um, I'd love it if you took away a greater understanding of core, the Core 5 program and the tools that you need to effectively support your child's use of this amazing reading resource. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about what Core 5 does for students. So again, it is an individualized learning experience and it covers foundational literacy skills for all students in grades pre-K through grade five. It is Tennessee standards aligned, Tennessee state standards aligned, and meets the most rigorous state standards across the United States. It's a proven, research proven, technology-based approach, and it really accelerates reading skills development, and it even predicts students' end of year performance. Students are able to move through the program at their own pace as they strengthen their literacy skills. They receive explicit, 
systematic and personalized learning in the six areas of reading instruction. So when we think about the teacher side of Core 5, teachers are provided with real-time data that helps them determine how to help differentiate instruction and really support individual student needs and also small group instruction. The data that's gathered is analyzed without interrupting the flow of instruction. So as students work on the program, they don't, they don't have to stop in order to get uh, solid data to teachers. Next slide, please. So let's talk about this small group of second graders that's presented here. So while a group of second graders may be in the same class, more than likely they are working at various performance levels. Students will be placed at their appropriate starting level in the program after they've had an opportunity to independently complete that auto placement. And as they work through the program, the task actually adjust based on their level of support or the level of support that they need in that particular instance. So each student will have a prescribed weekly usage based on their current level, and that could range from 20 minutes to 80 minutes per week. Again, that's all dependent on the level of performance for each student. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So a little bit about the student dashboard. So when students log into the program, they see the student dashboard. They're then able to see a visual representation of their journey. If you, if you see here, it's a journey around the world as they complete various levels. Students can track their own progress from this view as well. They're able to see the minutes accumulated on Lexia Core 5, their minutes remaining or minutes to go for that particular week, and the units that they've completed for that particular week as well. So while we highly encourage practice on the program, it is important to be mindful of the usage target. If you're working with your student, continue setting goals to reach the target that is prescribed by the program. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about what is gathered on the back end of that online program that students are working on independently. So as students work throughout the program, they're essentially moving through three branches of performance. The first branch of the performance is the standard branch. You'll notice that their progress bar on the screen is green. That means they're working through the program without any errors. They'll then bump down to guided practice and the progress, the progress bar will turn blue if they start to come come upon errors or stumble on the information that's being presented. This is scaffolded support. So that means that the online program is providing additional prompts or removing some of the questions so they can really focus on the meat of what's being asked so they can move back to that standard step. Now the final step here, if a student continues to struggle with an activity, is direct instruction. You will notice that the progress bar goes from blue to yellow and you'll also see a red Apple come up. Now it's important to note that the online component should be done independently because as students are working through the different branches, teachers are getting data about what materials they need once they're done with that online portion. So if they're in the standard step, students are continuing to move through the program and they'll eventually receive a Lexia skill builder. If they bump down to the direct instruction step, students will eventually receive a Lexia lesson and that's teacher led. So again, it's important that students are able to work through the program independently. So the, the decisions that teachers are making to meet their needs best align with what they're doing on the online component. Next slide, please. So while usage is one part of the program, the other crucial part of the program is that teacher-led instruction. This provides your child's teacher with a specific instructional action plan and resources to support every student where they are. So let's explore the model that's used to deliver this support. Next slide, please. So Lexia's blended learning model consists of three main components. The online student activities, what we just went over, is what you're probably most familiar with. That's that independent online student experience. The second portion of that is the data, the ongoing data that's collected while students are working independently. That goes to a portal called MyLexia that then provides reports for teachers. 
And then finally, once teachers have had an opportunity to look at that data to understand ways to support students, they're provided with instructional resources. These come in the form of Lexia lessons or Lexia skill builders, and we'll talk a little bit more about them in a second. Next slide, please. So here's a brief overview of the reports and scores that teachers see when they log in. Uh, gives a great snapshot of information regarding the, the time remaining on a, for a particular week in terms of minutes, uh, where that student is in terms of unit completion, so on and so forth. Um, but what's really vital on this page that teachers will use from what students are doing online is the action plan. So again, as students are working in the program, data is constantly being generated and sent directly to that teacher in the form of an action plan. So they know exactly what to print off, what additional materials they'll need, and how to support that student in the learning. Next slide, please. So now that we've had an opportunity to look at that data component, let's look at the instructional resources that are then provided to support students. Next slide, please. So the instructional resources essentially come in the in the main, main in these main two parts. We have Lexia Lessons and Lexia Skill Builders. Lexia Lessons are resources for offline teacher-led instruction to support students who are identified as struggling in the online student component. Again, the Lexia lessons are provided when a student bumps down to that direct instructional branch and a red apple appears. So as soon as that pops up, they're assigned a lesson that the teacher is able to see and deliver uh, person to person or virtually. After Lexia lessons, we have skill builders. Now skill builders are paper-based offline or available digitally as well, but they're designed to provide more opportunities for students to work independently on content. They're designed for independent completion because students receive these as they complete levels in the program. And they're a great way to really assess whether or not the student understood the content in that level. And then finally, we have Lexia at home activities. These are what we encourage you to use when your student is not working on a skill builder or hasn't been assigned a Lexia lesson to really close the loop on the learning there. Next slide, please. So your home activity sheet and skill builders are a few of the resources that you may see students bring uh, bring home to complete. You can also find our home activity sheet on our online uh, website and I'll provide that later in our training today. Next slide, please. Here's some additional offline resources. You'll notice here that some of these can actually be cut out. Uh, and once you print them off and you can leave a copy at home for the student to practice uh, in in between the online component or whatever the teacher is uh, enforcing in class. You will also notice here that there are a few reading passages. We highly encourage you to read with your student or alongside them or reading to them. It's a great way to really reinforce those skills that they're learning via Core 5. Next slide, please. In addition to the other resources that I just went over, we did publish uh, some of our resources due to the remote setting that we're operating in now. So you may actually be able to find a lesson online that aligns with what, what students are getting in class. Again, it's very important that you follow closely with however those are outlined um, so that you're not doing anything at home that the teacher has already taken point on, more so or less you're, you're just supporting what the student is doing there. Next slide, please. And then finally, I highly encourage you to dive into the program. There is a student demo um, that allows you to log in so you're not having to log use your actual child's login information. Um, if you look at the screen here, feel free to take a, a quick snap of this. You can follow the URL lexiacore5.com. You'll enter the username district at core5demo.com and password success so that you can actually see what it feels like as your student moves through the program. And then finally, those at home resources, you can follow the website that's provided there. I'll also be sharing that link with us later today as well. Next slide, please. 
And just to quickly review that Lexia blended learning model, one of the most important things to remember here is that there needs to be a connection between what the student is experiencing online on the independent portion, and then what instruction looks like in the classroom. And each of these components work together to support your child's literary success. It is more than just that online component. And then I really want you to walk away with the understanding that the online instruction component should be completed independently, because as you've seen, there are parameters and supports that are already put in place to help students uh, perform if they run into any issues. Next slide, please. So let's go ahead and close with how Lexia can partner with you at home to really support your child's literacy. I hope you took these uh, walk takeaways in terms of our objective for today, and I hope that um, we've met that objective as well. Next slide, please. So while we recognize that parent may mean different things to different children, um, and we understand that guardianship looks different across many families, I want you to know that whatever role you may be serving in your student's life here, um, it's very important to consider your why and why we support students at home. Um, I'd love for you to reflect on the following quote that's on the screen. It reads, involved parents enhance student school performance in a number of ways, including fostering mastery orientation toward learning and encouraging self-discipline, a skill that is critical to school success. So mastery orientation simply refers to a child's desire to become competent on a task, and children who possess high mastery orientation want to learn simply for the sake of learning, and that's what we want to see with students as they use the program. Next slide, slide please. So we've gone over uh, quite a bit of information in terms of supporting students on the actual program, um, making sure that they're completing that online com component independently and then following up with those at home resources. I highly encourage you to check out the list that's, that's provided here and consider ways that these additional supports will show up for your child this week. Next slide please. Thank you again so much for your time today. It's been great to share um, this information with you. I hope that you are excited and feel prepared to support your student at home. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Katie at this time. Thank you so much, Jasmine and uh, Megan, and I am going to turn it back over to Dr. Williams. Yeah, thanks, Katie, and uh, let me give a personal uh, note of gratitude to both Megan and Jasmine. You, you two did uh, an amazing job just sharing information. Um, I want to apologize for any technical glitches, and it's important uh, for me to continue to uh, learn ways to empathize with uh, the, the teachers in our district and across the country, frankly, um, who struggle with technology. Um, you have the best laid plans and you coordinate. We could have spent an entire week prepping and we would still would have had some of the technical issues we faced tonight, but um, but that's okay. I, I appreciate your preparation and your presentation and being flexible and adaptive, uh, even with those technical uh, technology glitches. So again, thank you. Um, we've had such great feedback from our schools, from teachers, from principals um, about the, the quality of, of your products. And uh, we're just really glad that you, you all have taken the time to be here tonight to share uh, some information with how families can think about supporting uh, these tools at home. Uh, Katie, I have a, a question for you. I think it came up in the chat. Um, and uh, Dr. Perry is going to be um, calling out questions as, as they come in. Um, we're at that, that part of our presentation. But Katie, just a quick question for you to make sure everyone is clear. Um, how do students get access to both iReady and Lexia um, so that they can participate in and, and get logged in and, and engaged in the program. Yes, thank you for asking about this. Um, all students have access to both uh, Lexia and iReady through Clever. Um, and so in order to, to log in, you would go through your Clever um, uh, portal in whatever way you usually do. Um, could be through the, the MyMNPS folder or through Schoology. Um, you may uh 
if this if your student has not started in one um, of these programs, uh, you'll certainly want to um, contact the teacher because the first thing that's going to come up in each of these programs is that placement uh, assessment, the diagnostic that Megan talked about um, and something called auto placement in in Lexia. Um, so you'll want to contact your child's teacher, but everyone has access through Clever. Great. And um... That's great because um, it's already built into the the programs there. So the students, when they just simply log into their computer, um, they can just simply click uh, right there and they don't have to do anything special. They don't have to download a, a particular program or do anything special. Um, it's already it's already built into the information that they have access to already. Um, thank you, Katie. And then as we, um, Renee, I'm going to turn it over to you in just a second. But one question I would like for Megan and Jasmine to bo both answer is, um, we, we started out briefly introducing um, <clears throat> these programs through our MTSS, our multi-tiered system of supports. Um, and one of the primary reasons for our um, making these programs accessible to students was to support the intervention space where we have uh, students along a continuum of learning needs. Um, but can you both describe how this your programs are good for all students regardless of their skill or ability level? Um, and particularly from an equity lens in, a, in the virtual space. So Jasmine, would you mind uh, just talking about how this is, you know, your program is good for all kids, not just um, students who may be in need of intervention or have specific skill deficits. Definitely. So um, one of the things that I highlighted briefly were the teacher led instructional resources. Um, all of our teachers actually have a resource hub that they can visit. They're not only provided um, Lexia lessons and the skill builders that are assigned directly in correlation with where the student is in the program. They also have access to Lexia connections, which are a great way to really involve students on various different levels, whether they are below grade level, on grade level, or above grade level. They include additional ideas that a teacher can incorporate in the classroom, um, either virtually or in the physical classroom. And they also have ideas for teachers who may not actually support a class where reading is a centric part of the of the class, for example, math or social studies or or a science course per se. Um, so that's one of the ways that Lexia provides additional resources for teachers to use for students, um, regardless of the level that they're on and to really enrich the experience that they have. And those again are called Lexia connections. And then I'll also uh, just uh, close out by saying that this is an adaptive program. So as students progress through the different levels, the material gets more and more challenging. And depending on, you know, how they how they progress at what rate they're progressing through the program, um, they're constantly being being challenged and being moved through. So we like to tell our, our teachers and, you know, our other partners that there will always be something that the students able to review, go back and 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 reread or um, continue to be pushed to that next level in uh, Lexia Core 5. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, <clears throat> Megan, if you're still there, could you uh, answer uh, the same question and regarding iReady, uh, iReady, how it, the program is, since it's adaptive, can benefit students regardless of their current uh, skill or ability level? Absolutely. So what's really special about iReady uh, is that the lesson pathway is personalized for every student. So we have over 1,400 lessons in iReady uh, that serve across grades, kindergarten through eighth grade. So when you're talking about a student, let's say, who's in second grade, um, we know that there are students in the same second grade classroom, classroom who all have different skills and different areas of need, whether that be above grade level, on grade level, or approaching grade level. So each student's lesson pathway is specifically designed and curated for them. So we're looking at those 1400 lessons, the skills and the standards associated with those lessons, and then aligning the lessons to each of your individual students' needs. So if the student is ready for some advancement and enrichment, guess what? That's what they're going to get. If a student is ready for some on grade level, more in depth work, then that's what they'll receive. If a student needs some support in approaching grade level, they'll receive that instruction. So wherever students are, they're able to receive the lessons that are most appropriate for them. 
Now, also within each lesson, let's say a teacher assigns everyone in the class a particular lesson. Each student's experience within that lesson will be different because each student's skills and areas of need are different. So some students will move through that lesson very quickly. As our lessons are adaptive, students will be able to jump through and skip through different portions of the lesson as they are answering questions correctly. If students are struggling in that lesson, it will activate the responsive instruction and the scaffold to provide that added level of support. And that happens right within the lessons as a part of the intra adaptivity of the iReady lessons. So whether it's the lessons that are lined up for each of your students that demonstrates its ability to reflect each of their individual needs, but also within each lesson, their experience reflects their uh, level of skill and knowledge. iReady is able to provide a true equitable experience for each student because it is personalized for each student. That's great. Um, I appreciate both of those answers. Um, spot on. And Jasmine, I'll go, I'll go back to you. Um, how how would a parent measure success? I think you know um, both of you talked about this idea of a dashboard and, and ways for parents to to be involved and engage with their student progress. But just roughly, um, how much time would a student be expected to spend per week, say on Lexia uh, for you, Jasmine, and then I ready for Megan uh, in order to actually show progress? So in other words, if I'm helping a student at home. What should I expect to see in terms of their usage dosage, if I can use that term, uh, in order for them to be successful? Yeah, so great question there. So um, I mentioned this in the session as well, but that dashboard is going to be probably your greatest tool in gauging whether or not your student is successful in the program, along with some additional teacher follow up. So let's talk about that dashboard briefly. Um, you'll notice that each week your student has a usage target and a unit target. And that is essentially in response to uh, how they've performed the week before, or if they've not been in the program, what the auto placement has detected in terms of their needs. There is a, a chart that then informs how many minutes and how many units they should complete each for that particular week, and then adjust each week after that. Um, the adjustments essentially allow for the teacher to gauge whether or not that student is on track to meet the end of year grade level benchmark. So the program, again, because it's adaptive, it actually adjusts to how many minutes that the student needs in the program each week so that they can meet that end of, end of year grade level benchmark. So for example, you may see a, your student start out with 40 minutes in the program depending on whatever level he or she um, is should be on based off the information that the program has, has gathered. Um, you may see the following week it bumps to 30 minutes because maybe they're really, they really sore through the previous week and they're doing a solid job and um, more or less supports are needed there. But then the following week, you may see that additional minutes have been prescribed, maybe due to the work that was done in the previous week. Um, but again, the, the program literally responds to how the student is moving through that particular level and what they'll need to reach their end of end of your grade level benchmark. And then the teacher component, um, teachers, you know, may, may be checking in on a uh, weekly basis or a quarterly basis, they'll go over that actual ind individual student overview where where you can actually see um, how many minutes a student has been in the program for a specific amount of time. Um, and they may highlight some some areas where they want to really support students as well. So those are just a brief overview of how you can gauge success in the program uh, and how you can continue to support students with being successful there. Thank you, Jasmine. I really appreciate you know talking about the 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 dosage and the unit goals, but how they they may change, right? Depending on the student's uh, progress within the program. So, um, just a further indication that the program is very customized and tailored and personalized to each student based on his or her needs. So, I think that's great. Um, um, Megan, what about what about for iReady? Yes. So, um, with iReady, um, we have. Um, 
we have, we have such great data from students all across the nation using iReady. Um, just about 30% of students across the country, kindergarten through eighth grade, are using iReady. So with that, we've been able to um, study the data to understand what is really appropriate. How much time should students be spending on their iReady lessons to get the most uh, the most benefit out of using iReady? And uh, the number one thing to remember is that iReady is not intended to replace the teacher. Teacher-led instruction, teacher-first instruction, teacher decisions are still most important. So I really intended to support that teacher-led instruction. Or what we've learned through our research is that it's just 45 minutes per week, per week, not per day, per week that students can spend on iReady in order to have great gains. Uh, what we've seen is that students in mathematics using iReady have 38% more growth when they have 45 minutes per week in iReady with high pass rates, right? Not just in iReady, click, click, click in through the lessons, but given their best effort on their lessons, those students have 38% more growth than students that are using other online programs. So that 45 minutes per week isn't an arbitrary number. It's a number based on actual research and successful outcomes of millions of students across the country. So the goal that we suggest is 45 minutes per week for iReady lessons. Megan, thank you. Nothing will warm a former high school math teacher's heart than millions of kids who have, <laughs> we've got data from millions of kids to, to justify that <laughs> recommendation. So thank you for that. But you brought up an important point um, that I wanna circle back to that the these both of these programs are not intended to replace the tier one or core instruction that students would receive. Um, daily and so of course in our virtual environment that looks a little bit different uh, with the the schedule that a student may have throughout the week about when they actually have synchronous lessons with their teacher or they may have some asynchronous assignments that they're completing independently um, but but Katie um, just along that that idea this time that's recommended uh, both from Lexi or iReady that is going to be in addition to core instruction. Can you just clarify and confirm that for everyone, please? Yes, sure. Um, yes, we, we as as we discussed at the very beginning, um, we want to ensure first and foremost that all of our students are fully engaged in their their core um, instruction for literacy and math. Um, and we are fortunate to have built into our schedules both in the in the virtual space and the face to face space um, additional time for personalized learning. And that is a that is time um, where we intentionally provide an additional support um, for each student um, based on on the best use of that student's time. Um, and so, yes, these both of these resources are to be just an, an additional add on, an additional uh, resource for to further personalize their learning um, beyond that, that strong tier one core instruction. Great, thank you, Katie. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that We've gotten such great feedback from our from our schools and from our our teachers and uh, school administration staff that have been using these programs. Um, so we're we're just incredibly pleased that um, all the challenges that we have faced with the pandemic um, and standing up virtual learning. We're just pleased to have uh, some strong programs to support the strong instruction that our teachers are providing uh, as an additional resource that has been made available to all of our students and. Uh, as you've heard tonight, all students can benefit from um, getting into the programs, completing the diagnostics so that the program can customize the learning needs for that particular student, um, set some goals and benchmarks and measures of success, and allow those students to engage in the program regularly throughout the week um, at a time that's convenient for them if it's not part of their regular school day. Um, and then have the data and the research to show that uh, when students are engaged appropriately, um, the learning will take place. and. There is certainly a lot of concern around the country and, and certainly in Tennessee and Metro schools about the challenges that we face with the pandemic and uh, students experiencing learning loss. And, and we know that this is there's no silver bullet, uh, but this is uh, one of uh, well, just a great resource that we know families and students can take advantage of to hopefully combat that and, and accelerate their their learning gains so that so that they are making improvements and, and having improved outcomes. So with that, again, I just want to thank um, our, our presenters from both 
iReady and Lexia tonight. I want to thank Katie for uh, for uh, her support, Dr. Perry for producing behind the scenes there, and also our, our translators again. I believe that uh, Rocio had some technical difficulties. That must be the theme for the night, um, but but I hopefully, hopefully she was able to get back on. The, the materials and, and information in this session will be posted to uh, the MMPS site as soon as it's available uh, for anyone who wants to go back and uh, rewatch a particular section and get clarification on any particular issue. Um, you can always reach out to us. You can find us, uh, our emails. Uh, we're always here to help. You can always reach out to your school, your child's teacher for additional support. But again, just to, to remind everyone, these programs are uh, setting our students up for success. They're available for any student, regardless of their situation or learning needs, uh, and can provide support and give students the best opportunity to learn. So uh, with that, we'll sign off. Again, thank you for your attendance and for being here and uh, have a great night.